Hey, what's happening? Welcome back to training. I wanted to put together a lesson on GitHub Copilot knowledge bases because this is a subject that should be on most developers' minds, namely, how do I fine tune the GPT that GitHub Copilot uses so that it's aware of our coding conventions and practices? Well, here's how it works. This is something that you have to be you have to be at the right tier for. Basically, it's like this. You know it's software as a service. There's a free trial, but it's either you're paying monthly as an individual business or enterprise. Now, let me do a control F. Where am I, by the way? I'm in the GitHub Copilot docs, which I hope you'd have bookmarked anyway. It's docs.github.com slash copilot. And I'm under about GitHub Copilot subscriptions. And I'm going to control F and look for knowledge bases. So it looks like you have to be on Copilot Enterprise for those. It figures. I mean, it's just business, isn't it? So here's what happens. We can. So yeah, I guess we can go directly to my org. And in my organization settings, this is going to be where you create your knowledge bases. We can come down here under Code Planning and Automation, Copilot, and then Knowledge Bases. What is a knowledge base? A knowledge base is one or more repos, they can be public, internal, or private, that have your particular domain-specific data. Now, any devs who are going to use knowledge bases need to have read on those repos. But other than that, it's just a case of, as you can see, as an admin at the org level, I can create a new knowledge base, internal docs, right? And then we can enlist repos, of course, within our org space, but we can go searching for anybody's public repos. You might want to bring in the PEP8 conventions for Python. You see what I'm saying? And what happens when you bring in these repositories as knowledge bases is they become indexed and available. So I have a TW org coding standards. And in terms of how do you modify and update and delete knowledge bases as an admin, it's going to be you continue to maintain the source repo. And then you'll also want to come in here and you'll want to edit the knowledge base, make some kind of tweak, or just simply update the knowledge base. And because the GitHub API is so eminently programmable, you can automate that pretty trivially. That refresh process, that's definitely something I would do if this were in scope for me. Just for grins, if you want to take a look at that sample repo, it is a public repo. In my environment, I created a public repo called Demo KB. And what I did here to test the feature is that I wanted to, oh, by the way, this is important. The docs say that your markdown files in order to be indexed properly need to be either markdown and or MDX. MDX is markdown that has additional JavaScript for interactivity. And hopefully you have your developer docs and your policy docs and all that stuff in Markdown because hopefully you've already got it in source code control. So here it's a question of just having a canonical place. Now you could nominate a knowledge base that is hosting other stuff besides docs, but in the interest of proven practice and security, I would suggest you put your knowledge in dedicated repos and manage them this way. Yes, it's going to increase your administrative surface, but it's also going to minimize vulnerability, and hopefully maintenance. So what I did in this coding practices markdown is I created a key format for API keys. I wanted to put something in here that the AI would have to get from the knowledge base. So again, I've created this as a straight up public repo. At the org level, I chose to index this. I'll need to remember that name, Demo KB, because now it's time to test it in the editor. The standard disclaimers apply with GitHub Copilot in your IDE. It's quite a different experience. I was playing with GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio 2022 last night, and I was pretty taken aback at how different it is. I'm very happy in VS Code, and I hope you are as well. So in VS Code, I'm not going to go through my traditional windup of making sure GitHub Copilot is installed and enabled. Instead, we're going to cut right to the chase. I'm looking at my repo. I've got the PyGoat deliberately vulnerable application repo in here, but it doesn't really matter. The idea is, let's say I want to create a TWORG API key in PowerShell. What was that spec again? You see what I mean? Here's the way it's implemented. In your chat, you're going to use the chat participant syntax, the at, and we're going to do an at GitHub. And when you do an at GitHub, that is, it's called a chat participant. We can look at it as a fine-tuned LLM that GitHub Copilot is going to send a nested API request to. 
And GitHub knows about our knowledge bases. So what we can do is do an at GitHub with the pound syntax, which we use to attach. And notice the very first one in the list, search your enterprise's knowledge bases. So it's a pound KB. And when you do that in VS Code, it enumerates all of the knowledge bases in the org to which you have read access. In my case, it's the Torg org coding standard. So now given that prefix, I'm going to now complete the prompt by saying, show me how to create a Torg API key in PowerShell, please. And let's send that in. Okay, well, unfortunately, it bombed out, got a 400 error. This actually brings up some important points, though. It's important that you get on board with this notion of chat participants and the fact that in VS Code, we've got at GitHub, which is going to be your gateway, as I just said, into your knowledge bases. If this didn't have a bug in it, perhaps I can update everything and try again and it'll work just fine. That's the idea. So it's important to understand that. And actually, even the error text might lead us down a path because notice it says failed to find a skill. So there's an API for this whole chat participant thing. And the things, the methods, the actions, and the API definition that those chat participants can do evidently are called skills. So this is giving us some, maybe some info that the GitHub Copilot chat team didn't want to leak, but I'm glad they did at any rate for our learning and education purpose. And to that point, I want to give you a reference here in the Visual Studio docs. So this is more of a Visual Studio, Visual Studio code thing. But in VS Code, the underlying modalities and APIs that if you are a developer, I'd have you look at. I'll put a link to this page in the video notes. It's called the chat extension API. And those at agents are called chat participants. And it goes on to discuss the workspace one that hopefully we're well famil familiar with. This is important info, and I don't see it out in the public too much. So hopefully this is a good level up on you. I know that I need to dig into this more. I predict we'll be using these chat extensions to participate with our own truly fine-tuned GPTs. Well, I'll leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed this lesson as always. Take good care. Thank you.